Some critics are arguing that the latest European multiannual financial framework is not as growth-oriented as it should be. Do you agree with that? Well, when you look at the growth chapters, that is uh, competitiveness and, and cohesion, uh, the size as a share of EU GNI is the same that was agreed back in 2005 in the previous uh, financial perspective. Uh, so that doesn't change a lot. Uh, true size, it's not all what matters uh, to generate uh, growth, but we don't even see a dramatic change in the governance, for example, and in the delivery of the structure and cohesion funds. So nothing really uh, dramatic has been done uh, to change that uh, from the previous uh, multiannual financial framework. The latest budget, though, does allow for some flexibility. Is that a strength? Yeah, true. You read the European Council conclusions and there are a number of, of items that uh, speak about uh, some, some flexibility, which I think is very important and could be a strength in the end, uh, such that it may even overcome the constraint of, of the size. And the flexibility consists in the fact that spending can be moved across chapters, um, and I guess this is quite uh, important because it would allow countries to use the funds depending on, on circumstances. One other important thing in, in the conclusion is the so-called re review clause where the European Council is inviting the Commission to review spending and the distribution of, of funds uh, three years from the start of the multi-annual financial framework with particular reference to crisis countries to see if they're doing okay, if they need more. Of course, a lot can change given the European Parliament still has to rubber stamp the deal. What lies in jeopardy? I mean, if something changes uh, because of the Parliament, it can only change uh, for the better. Uh, this, is a, this is a good news. And compare with the previous uh, financial perspective, now under the new Lisbon Treaty, the Parliament can now either reject or accept the agreement that was reached on, on the 8th of February. Um, I doubt they will go down the road of, of rejecting because that would imply a dramatic delay in, in the distribution of the funds in, in, the, in the whole financial perspective. And that would be probably a loss for all, for the EU as a whole. But where the European Parliament can really, I think, make a difference is now in the legislative phase. Uh, there are quite uh, numerous uh, pieces of law that uh, the European Parliament needs to agree on. Is a co-legislator, which means it can propose amendments, and by proposing amendments it can make uh, a difference that is maybe quite substantial. In your latest blog post, you argue that a lot of the post-budget deal commentary has made inaccurate comparisons to the last MFF. What do you argue has to be factored in when dissecting the current budget? Of course, it is important to look at cost constant prices as opposed to, to current prices. But I think to understand the political commitment that national governments have towards the budget um, it would be important to look at the conclusions in the previous European Council of 2005 just to see how much each heading represented then as a share of EU GNI, uh, data available at the time, and as a share of the total budget uh, expenditures. And this is probably um, the most accurate comparison to, to, to understand the strength of the political commitment across the two financial perspectives.